Hi there, this video is just going to quickly show you how to find the shortest distance from some given point to a line. Okay, and let's get right into it. It says find the shortest distance from this point, negative 1, 3, to this particular line here. And it's in, you know, slope intercept form, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but let's start by plotting that point. Let's use, I don't know, blue pen. So negative 1, 3, negative 1 and 3 is right here. Here's our first point, okay? And then this slope-intercept form means um, when, you, when you graph one of these, um, you always start with the y-intercept, which is right here, this 5. The y-intercept, so we're going to have a point right here. And the slope of this line is right, right over here in front of the x. And in this case, it's invisible. It's just a 1 there. And 1 is really the rise of 1, and the run is 1. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, make sure you watch a video on the slope-intercept form so that this part here doesn't confuse you, okay? So let's look at the rise over run. Um, it's 1, or 1 over 1. So that means the rise is 1 and the run is 1. The rise is 1 and the run is 1. And we're just going to keep this pattern going, okay? I'm going to connect it with, a, let's say, a red a red line, it's sort of like a ruler. There we go. That's probably better, it's straighter than I'm able to do. And what they're wondering here is what is the distance between this little point right here and this line? And not just any distance, what's the shortest distance? And the shortest distance of a line is going to be a 90 degree angle to this line, okay? In other, words, in other words, sometimes we use the word perpendicular or a right angle to this line, okay? So that's going to be the shortest distance from this point to this red line here. It has to be 90 degrees. So the very first thing we might want to do in order to find the shortest distance to this line is to figure out what is the slope of this red line here. And then if we were to um, flip the slope, and change the sign, it's called a negative reciprocal, that would get us the slope of the line that would get us right to this little point right here. So let's start by finding this slope. Well, we don't really have to work very hard at finding the slope because our equation said the slope is 1, or 1 over 1. So if the slope is 1 of this line, then the slope, the opposite slope of 1, a 90 degree angle to that, would be you flip this, okay, it's, well, when you flip 1 over 1, you still get 1 over 1, but you also change the sign, okay? So, basically, the slope of the line that's coming from here to here is 1 over 1, okay? Um, so, I don't know if I can draw it in green, but that's, that's, our, that's our angle right there. Um, 1 over 1 would mean we have dots going you know, um, one down, one across, one down, one across. So we know that there's a line that's slicing through the exact opposite of this line here. Okay, so there's our there's our 90 degree angle. Um, but what we want to know is the distance. So it'd be really good to know this exact point right here. If we knew that exact point, then uh, we'd be able to find the distance between two points, which is something that we've learned in previous videos. And that's the thing about this video. It does assume that you know certain things uh, from other videos that I've made. So I definitely don't want to sit and confuse you, but let's carry on from here. Okay, so we know the slope of this line. We know it's negative 1. If we were to draw an equation, we'd say the slope of this line is negative 1. Um, it would be really cool if we knew the, the y-intercept, where this line is going to cut through. And it looks like it's going to cut through right here. I mean, we can guess. It looks like it's cutting through it, too. So that we could say this, this equation of this line, this green line here, would be negative 1x plus 2. But let's verify and make sure that it really is 2 just in case it's not so easy on a question that your teacher gives you. So here's the equation. And let's say we didn't really know what this y-intercept was, even though I think it's 2. And I think you agree with me. 
How would you find that to? Well, what you do is you say, well, we know one point along this line for sure. We know one point. It was given to us. The point was negative 1 and 3. So if we were to put negative 1 where the x is, because that's the x value, and if we were to put the 3 where the y value is, we could come up with the y-intercept, which is this b portion right here. So I'm going to write 3 instead of y is equal to negative 1. I'm just getting that. That's the slope. Multiplied by another negative 1 plus b. And then if we were to multiply these two together, we would get positive 1 plus b. And sure enough, if we subtracted 1 from both sides, b is 2. So now we have an equation. Uh, we have an equation that says negative 1x plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase um, some of this writing here so that we have room. We have negative 1x plus 2. So in order to find where these two, we have two equations here, this one right here and this one. If we wanted to find where the point is that these two lines meet, and we've done this in other videos as well, it's called the point of intersection. Um, of course you could graph this in Desmos and it would quickly tell you, but if you had to do it algebraically or using just a pen and paper or pencil and paper, what I'm going to do here is, and there's multiple ways to do this, I'm just going to say, well, if y equals x plus 5 and y also equals negative 1x plus 2, I'm just going to make these two equal to each other. I'm going to write the x plus 5 right here, and I, I'm going to put an equal sign and say, well, apparently that's also equal to y, so it must also be equal to negative 1x plus 2. Hope this isn't too confusing. We're finding the point of intersection, and I have other videos on this, okay? Now I want to put these x's together because they are like terms, so I'm going to bring this guy over to this side. I'm going to add 1x to both sides. So if I added 1x to both sides, x plus another x is 2x. And to get rid of this 5, I'm going to bring him over to the 2. And the way to do that is to subtract 5 from this side. So I'm going to say 2 minus 5, that would give us negative 3, and so the last step is to get rid of this 2 to find out what x is. So x, if we divided both sides by 2, which is what you have to do in this step, and that's an algebraic thing, you divide both sides by 2, you get negative 3 over 2. Okay? Which means, if we were to look at this as a decimal, that's like saying negative 1.5. Let's see if that makes sense. We're looking for the spot where these two lines meet negative 1.5. Well, there's negative 1. Over here is negative 1.5. Yes, that looks correct. So we know negative 1.5 would be there. Um, in order to find the y value, all we have to do is substitute negative 1.5 into either one of these equations. Okay, so uh, I'll sub it in y equals x plus 5. So y equals negative 1.5, I'm putting this negative 1.5 where the x is right here, plus 5, and negative 1.5 plus 5 is negative, sorry, positive 3.5. Let's see if that makes sense. If y is 3.5 and x is negative 1.5, that means we go 1.5 left and 3.5 up, 1, 2, 3 and a half up. All right, so let's plot the point right here that we just found. This point right here, I'm just going to write it down up here so that it's more obvious. It is negative, the x value is negative 1.5, and the y value is 3.5. Sorry for the mess, folks. The other point that we already were given is negative 1 and 3. Negative 1 and 3. We now have two points. We've gone to a lot of work just to come up with these two points. And now we have to recall from a video I've made in the past, and hopefully your teacher has taught this to you as well, and if not, just watch the video on the distance formula. The distance formula when you're given two points, okay? If you are given two points, and in this case we have two points, and so the distance formula looks something like this. It's the square root of if you subtract the x values 
and then square them plus subtracting the y values and squaring them. If you do all that work, you're going to find the distance between these two points. And there's other ways to find this distance since we've drawn it, but we're going to use this way, this technique here, so that you wouldn't necessarily have to draw this all out just to, just to get here. So I'm going to keep the square root sign here. And the difference between the x values, so let's look at the x values. We've got negative 1.5 and negative 1. So if you go negative 1.5, minus negative 1, be careful, it's like two minus signs, it's like saying negative 1.5 plus 1. You end up getting negative 0 0.5. You can try it on your calculator if you don't agree with me. Negative 1.5 minus negative 1, remember there's two negatives, that'll make negative 0 0.5 and we're going to square it. Let's do the same thing with the y values. 3.5 minus 3 is 0 0.5, okay? And you square it. The neat thing about when you square something, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative in there, we're going to end up getting, uh, I think it's 2.25, but I'm just going to verify. 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. Sorry, I said 2.25, I meant 0 0.25. Um, so we have 0 0.25 plus another 0 0.25. And if you add those up, we know you get 0 0.5. Okay, let's get our calculator out. So, here we go. So 0 0.25 times 2, or add them up, you get 0 0.5. And then the last step is to take the square root, and we get, I'm just going to round it off to 0. Point, I don't know, 0 0.71. I'm going to round it off to two decimals. So the final answer is 0 0.71. That is the distance between this point and this point. So we've just gone to a lot of work to come up with the distance as 0 0.71 units, or yeah, I guess we'd say units here. We don't know centimeters or inches or anything like that. It's just 0 0.71 units between this point and this point. And boy, we have done a lot of different steps just to get this 0 0.71. It seems like a lot of work just for a small problem, but if your teacher asked it and if you're totally confused, then at least having a video may help you walk through the steps you need to do it yourself. Um, if you're more confused than ever, I apologize. Not all my videos are this complicated. I, I actually believe that a lot of the videos are pretty good and a lot of people seem to agree with me. But this one, I'm worried that it may be a little confusing and for that, I apologize. For the rest of you that were helped here, you are welcome. <laughs> okay, there's the positive and the negative of life. Take care, everyone. Bye.